So Trump's Twitter just disappeared for about 12 minutes and the world is freaking out. Now, it already came back and Twitter said it was an, a mistake, but in that 12 minutes, you've seen basically half of America, including 90% of the various news outlets, rejoice and use that opportunity to talk about how happy they were that he's gone now. You know, finally, the, and Twitter says, sorry, it was a quote unquote, you know, a human error. It was an employee's mistake. And they're like, you know, uh, people say, promote that employee, ask him to do it again. And finally, we had a few minutes without the guy. And that really reminded me of something that I went through when I started going viral a year and a half ago because I made some pretty provocative videos, kind of caricature, just saying like, yeah, I make more money than you, your mom, your dad, your, your, your sister, your brother, everybody combined. And it became like a living meme in Israel. And people genuinely hated me. So about 90% of the people that saw it got offended. It's like there was finally a face for like people they hate, you know, and, and they basically took it all out on me. And I didn't know how to respond at the beginning because I was like, is this how it has to be? Like I want to, when you want to grow and expand, you know, you can do it slowly and kind of start gathering fans here and there and word of mouth. But what if you want to expand really, really fast and grow big? And how, how do you actually deal with that, that sort of criticism that could happen when you are provocative, but it could also happen when you're the president, and it could also happen when you're just a regular guy that offers something cool. And that made me think of my friends, people who are very successful in online marketing, and every single one of them has people, vast amounts of people creating like websites about this guy is a scam, you know, he, he's a shitty guy, and, you know, threads on Reddit, like, is this guy uh, legit? No, he's probably a dick, and people not even, they don't even make up, like, stories. They just try to find a way to kind of poke a hole in your narrative. They, they want to see the chink in the armor. They want to see that weakness in you, and for someone like me who's very kind of neurotic and very self-conscious on, on how I affect people. And it's very important for me to affect people positively. I realized early on that I have to be completely ethical in the way that I conduct myself. And I realized it because for a long time I was not ethical and I made a lot of mistakes and people really, really hated me. And the fact that I had a huge spotlight on me, oh God, that was, that was horrible. That was extremely horrible. Like imagine every mistake you've made, like there's a thousand people that are just waiting to see you make that mistake and just waiting for the slightest hint of incongruency because you're on a different standard now because you're, you know, you're famous, <laughs> So I, I would like this to be kind of a cautionary video and urge you to work on two things if you plan on being famous one day, as most of the people who follow me do. The first thing is you want to work on your ethics. You want to do deep, deep work on your ethics. And this means taking yourself up with honesty and looking at your behavior and seeing where are you not proper and fair with other people? Where have you been rationalizing certain lies to yourself about the way you behave with others? Maybe you never show up on time, or maybe you always manage to somehow screw somebody over, and then you say, oh, you know, it's, it was probably his fault. Maybe you're not very honest, and when you do something wrong, you hide the truth or you change it a bit, which is something that I had 
since I was growing up, since my dad was a very kind of angry man. And if he got angry at me, you know, I, I was like, you know, like the Louis C.K. joke, like, why not lie? <laughs> like, that's like the literally the best thing you can do at that time when you're a kid. It's, it's the lying is amazing. Um, but I had to face it later on. Because the thing is, imagine you're like a ship and the more famous you become, the higher it's like the higher the ship goes into space and the atmosphere changes and the pressure goes up immensely to the point where maybe you know if you're at the bottom you can have a lot of problems with the ship and nothing happens then you start to rise up a bit and then the foundations are checked so it's you know if you actually can go even start climbing up but then once you're actually on the up and up side cycle and the pressure exponentially grows. And now if you have even a loose screw, one loose screw in the ship, then that small mistake is going to be magnified so much that the pressure is going to go all, all the pressure is going to concentrate there. The screw is going to like bash out and everything is going to explode. Kind of like what's happening right now with Kevin Spacey, for example, who just recently it was discovered, alleged, that he r attempted to rape a 14-year-old boy. And suddenly, I just checked the news today, oh, apparently he also, uh, that was 20 years ago, by the way. And then now it's apparently he he's also uh, abused people on set for his show, The House of Cards. So everything starts to come back to hunt you. Like when you're successful or famous you can't do anything wrong and that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can make mistakes but you can't be unethical any sort of lack of ethics where you're not completely straight and congruent would crush you another example would be imagine like you're holding a there's a straight uh bar some, some sort of like a straw and you're applying downward pressure on it you're trying to crush it down now, if it's not complete, if it's not balanced, if it's like a bit crooked to one side or another, the pressure is going to like break one side and just going to either break or, or get squashed like to one side. But if it's completely straight, like absolutely parallel to the wall, then if you try to press it down, it's going to have immense power and it's going to maintain its stability because it's a perfect structure and perfect structures are very, very hard to, to chip or break. So you have to get, the, the higher your fame goes, the higher your ethics has to go. And if you want to get famous, you know, one, one of those people that, you're one of those people that are like, you know, I want to be ultra famous or I want to, you know, get noticed, you should get your ethics in line ahead of time because if you don't, you're going to get crushed. You're going to get absolutely crushed. And, you know, people say, oh, don't care what other people think. That's the solution. I don't think that's true. I think that people inherently, we don't really care what people think unless we think we did something wrong. And if you if you have a, your ethics down and you have really, really good set of values that you've practiced and grounded over years, then as long as you stay aligned with those, those values, not, nobody can say anything that will you know, put you off your guard because you've already been there you've already thought it through that's why thinking about ethics is so freaking important and that's why when you see what happening what's happening in hollywood with harvey weinstein and you know hiding like 60 plus cases you know just reported probably hundreds of cases of uh, sexual taking sexual advantage of women sexual assault rape uh, Nobody talks about it, you know, nothing happens. It's it's literally just a crooked foundation of ethics. And it's not these people's faults because the problem is once you become famous, you're under completely different pressure. And again, I can say it from experience. That's why I'm telling you why it's so freaking important. When you're famous, now people really want to see you fall. Not everybody, but a lot of people. And if you're in a success business, you know, kind of trying to get people to become better, then usually like 90% of the people want to see you fall and 10% really love you. And if you're like an actor, 
maybe 20% of the people hate you and 80% love you. And if you're a politician, then half hate you and half love you. Uh, even Trump, one of the, you know, quote unquote, the most hated presidents, about half the country hates him, but about half the country doesn't. So it's really hard to go beyond that. And it's really funny that on a proportional scale, people hate the president, like the, they hate success coaches more than they hate the president. <laughs> Um, but anyway, once you're actually in the spotlight, once you're actually in the air, you can't make repairs. And that's the problem because you're already under heavy, 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 heavy pressure. And so you don't have time to kind of fix things. But let's say that you did make a mistake and somehow got away with it. The thing is you can't repent now because how the way ethics work is you make a mistake, you acknowledge the mistake, and then you move on. But when you're under intense, intense, very crazy pressure from being famous, you can't just give it out. You can't be like, oh, you know, yeah, I did that really stupid. I oh, attempted to rape a 14-year-old boy uh, 20 years ago. Like, it, it, it's too late. You can't really do anything because everything will be under the spotlight. So any lack of uh, any, any forgetfulness or any... Uh, kind of waiting from your side to work on your ethics to the highest level you can currently reach, you're going to pay a hundredfold for that later because when you're there, it's too late. That's really the problem. It's like, when's the time to get insurance? It's before the shit happens, <laughs> you know, not after your house uh, got broken in and or, or, or burn, burned. You want to get it before. Uh, when's the best time to handle your finances and increase your income? It's not when the bank sends you the letter that your house is going to be foreclosed in a month. It's it's at the very start of the journey. Um, so yeah, I just I just love ethics, and because I made so many mistakes, and I'm lucky to be here. And after being crushed so many times because of my problems with ethics. I had to fix them. I really, really had to fix them. I had no choice. That was the only way to get back up after I lost everything. So I had to regain everything again. And the way I want to finish this is one way to get a, a lot better at seeing ethical decisions and becoming more ethical is to read really horrifying shit like, uh, for example, I'm reading right now the book, The uh, Gulag Archipelago, Archipaga, sorry, The Gulag Archipelago, and it was written by a guy named Alexander Solzhenitsky, who served in the Soviet regime um, before kind of Stalin came into power, and he got arrested, like, tens of millions of people there. Who, you know, the Soviets, the Bolsheviks, the non-communists. And apparently, you know, after you read the book, you realize that Hitler and the Nazis were uh, kind of, it could be argued that they were very tiny uh, in, terms of, in terms of their uh, evil and how much death and sh shit they done uh, next to the 100 million people that died in communist Russia. And... You just hear the worst stories of humanity ever. You really get a capacity for how evil people can be and also how similar to you they are, meaning that you can be that person too because you're human. Like they, they don't have a distinction. You can also read uh, the book by Dostoevsky, uh, which, you know, many people read when they were young, but you can come back to it now. Uh, Crime and Punishment. Again, also deeply um, thinking about morality and how a regular person could be, could become a, mortar, a murderer and what happens to your soul when you do that. And by recognizing evil, you are much better able to recognize it in yourself. It is actually the, the, the people who are naive, 
that I'm scared of, the people who do not recognize evil, because a person who did not contend with his evilness that is within him doesn't think it exists, that person is probably the most likely to be the first one that puts on the Nazi uniform when it's what makes sense, because just like a person who never practiced martial arts would be the first to lose the battle <laughs> against people who are very trained, a person who never trained in ethics would be the first to lose his ethics when he comes under challenged. It's actually the person who deeply confronted his evil side and understood his values that can resist evil in the face of temptation and situations that try to compel you to chip away at your own ethical standards. That's why there's very few highly ethical people in Hollywood uh, the same way that in your day-to-day -day life there's very few maybe three to five percent probably even less maybe even one percent of the people who actually are deeply ethical and care about values and commitments versus the others who you know may or may not but it's situational it's genetic it, there's no it was not thought of it was not created through determination it was cr created through simply you know good luck so that's my message for you <laughs> uh, kind of grim but you know any talk about ethics that is not at its root, uh, grim and acknowledgement of how we can be unethical is not a real talk about ethics. And I highly urge you that if you do want to become successful, you listen to the guidelines I gave you right now. And even before working on that thing, which will supposedly make you successful, focus on your ethics because they are the, really the great thing that protects you from destroying your life at any point in the journey. And I would even argue that the more ethical you are, when you do be choose to become successful and famous, then it is easier because the ethical person, the one who's thought it through and is working according to his ethics, he is, he's free. He's, he knows what he's doing. He knows he's good. So you have a lot more power when you don't down your, doubt yourself. So I hope this helps you. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't yet. Check out the links in the description to either book a coaching call with me, get my free ebook for traveling while making $1,000 sales, or buy my autobiography about myself. <laughs> Thanks for watching again, and I'll talk to you soon.